And we are back, or here for the first time. How about it? For our top 10 games of all time. All time. time. This is it. The, the world is waiting, and like, this is huge stuff. Because if you mess this up, then people are going to start canceling their subs on the YouTubes. Why do you say and you? stop dancing. Dancing? Well, how did that word even come out of my mouth? <laughs> Downloading <laughs> the podcast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> I think... Everyone's going to stop dancing if you don't have a good one. <laughs> what? This Why is, the... is this pointed in my direction? Why isn't it if we don't have good list, then we will lose subs? This is the top 10 dance party is what we're going to do, y'all. Okay. So this entire... If you are watching right now on YouTube or in, uh, you're driving in your car on the podcast, we would like for you to dance for the entire top 10 episode. Slow dance, like at a middle school dance. With the, the hands the, on the shoulders? Mm-hmm. Yep, far apart. Not too close. Put a beach ball between you, that sort of thing. If I put my hands on your hip, I dip, you dip, we dip, would you enjoy that? I, You know that I wouldn't. Okay. Not even a little. I think you asked me a question. I completely ignored it. Just as always. I don't know if I did. I'm going to move on, though. But just as always, and while we've been doing these lists, we have been recording just this part on YouTube, and everything else is on the podcast. So you're getting the same thing in both places. But if you would like to hear the first part of the podcast and you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to Podbean or you can go to MeepleTown. MeepleTownGames.com. Find all of our stuff the on Apple there. Apple Podcasts, the Google Play, all that stuff. That's Stitcher, right. doesn't matter. But Spotify. We're, we're everywhere you want to be. We're on the YouTube. Hopefully. We are on the podcasts. In your face, world. Yep. You can't get rid of us. All up in your face, dipping. Right? That's... You can't see this on the podcast, but John is doing some kind of weird, creepy dance, as you might imagine. And I'm dipping because I'm because I got some tobacco in my mouth, and I'm from Tennessee. Oh, I thought you were beatboxing. No, I was like going. Can we start? I was this? spitting it out. We have a limited amount of time. What's your number ten, Dean? Let's just go. My number ten is. Oh, I didn't check with you to see if this was on your list, but I think it is. It is. Okay, th- my number ten then is Glenmore Two. I will say this about it until we wait for John to explain a little bit more about it. This has moved up into my top 10 for the first time, I think. Yeah, this I, I game think rocks. that's right. I think that's right. This this was in my hovering hovering around top 10, but I don't think it was there in the past, if I remember right. I was I was trying to remember where it was last year or the year before. It wasn't. In, yeah, it was. 2019. I'm trying to remember. That was the first year we did this, right? So 2019, 2020. Yep. Where was it at last year? Uh, these, these aren't labeled. Let's see. Three, four, five, six, seven, oh eight, my gosh. nine. It was number 10 last year. Number 10, so, <laughs> so all that for nothing. It wasn't my, Wow, what a great that? way to start off the top 10. Oh, boy. Has it always been in my top 10? It, well, it wasn't on the list the year before. I guess we didn't have it in then. In then. Yep, okay, there we go. Never mind, it, was, it must have been 10. You're not dancing, Dean. I didn't think that was right. I thought it was like just outside. <laughs> yeah. The system is down. The system is down. What's that from? Um... System of a Down? No. <laughs> Homestar Runner. Do you remember that? Group? You remember Homestar Runner? I don't, actually. It's the Wong Bad. <laughs> All right. My, that's number 10 for Dean is Glenmore 2. Excellent pick, Dean. So excellent that it will be on my list here in a minute. <laughs> uh, my number 10. Thank goodness we're not going to lose subs. Is a game that was number one three years ago for me. Uh, it fell to number four or five last year, I think, and it's at number ten this year. Though I still absolutely love this game. All the n- top ten of all time, just love these games, man. Right? I mean, always willing to play it, always suggesting these games. Is that would that be accurate for you? Sure. Okay. Concordia. That's my number ten. Uh, Concordia Venus, particularly that version, because I really like the two versus two uh, nature of that nature i don't know if that's really the right word but the two versus two variant that you can play this one's gonna slip off your list next year oh my gosh i gotta get this off of concordia okay there's some pictures it may or may not but in concordia it's really really fun because you're going to be taking your uh person or your ship and you're going all around the board and as you're going around the board you're you know putting your houses out into different cities that the cities may specialize in brick or maybe silk or whatever that is, uh, wheat or different things like that, you're going to be um, getting cards. And I think the card play is probably the most important part of the game because when you get a card, it's the way you do your actions is by playing a card. Um, 
but when you get a card, you put it into your deck. So you're building a little bit of a deck, but not only are you getting an action based on what card you play, there's in-game scoring. So there's where all the grueling decisions, you know, come into play is, oh man, I want that card for that action, but I don't care so much about the in-game scoring because you're going to get in-game scoring. That's going to say things like you score X amount of points for however many colonists you have out on the map or X amount of points for however many, um, buildings that you have that are different that provide different goods and different things like that so just such a brilliant game this was on your list earlier dean it was uh you don't remember where it is right now but yep that's that I feel was, like it was like 40 or something like that yeah i think something. it was a, i think that may have been a first day game but I, I you know i mentioned this then i think that i have not played venus and that actually could make it rise for me Potentially. Yeah, th- I'm not sure. It's really good. And then the Salsa expansion is quite nice as well. You've not played with that or yes? Uh, you add salt. And then you also have some more yes, engine building Yes, tiles. I have. I have played with Did that Did you one. like that or no? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, this is just uh, not terribly difficult um, to play. And I think that that's quite nice. Let me see what it's rated, ranked overall. I didn't do Glenmore yet. Like we always, we've been going back if you're new to this. Um, to this list that we've been doing. We've been going back to BGG and looking at where it's ranked overall. We'll talk about Glenmore when we get there. 191 for Concordia Venus, but I'm going 18. back to actual Concordia, yeah. yeah, is 18 overall. So makes perfect sense. Yeah, yep. My number 10, Concordia. Or either one doesn't matter. Okay. But I like the other one with the other thing better. My number nine has been on my top 10 list since we've started doing this, I think, and that is Absolutely. Everdell. Everdell is a. This you is not it. on your list. I'm I'm sure of this right. It's that's not even right. in your top fifty, right? That's that's right. But it's 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 kind of borderline. So it's not. I still really like Everdell. Yeah, I mentioned this last week when we talked about Lost Ruins of Ardak, but the card play and worker placement is something that I'm finding very intriguing. Now, this is not a deck builder, but it is have it does. You have love these types of games. That tableau Imper- building, Imperial Settlers, all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Imperial Settlers was from from last week as well. In Everdell, you are building up, you're putting out woodland creatures, you're building out these locations to try to build up your little village in the woods, right? Yeah. And and that's it. But the, the cool thing is, is like you're placing, you're either going to be, you know, building out cards or you're going to be, you're going to be placing your workers uh, to, you know, to gain resources and to get lots of different mm-hmm. things. I just really love that I take an action, you take an action with those different mechanics mixed in there. You know what I mean? Like it's I do too. It's not just doing the same thing. You can either do one of those and that makes the decisions quite a bit more difficult. Everdell right now I guess is higher than those other ones. I do think that Lost Runes of Arnak probably will surpass this at some point wow. as I play it more and more. That's a mistake. And then this next year there will be one that will top all of them when it comes to those games. It's just not out yet. Bump bump. Probably. Bum. I, I, I actually would agree with that statement. It will for me. I'm almost positive. I think it probably will for me, but I have to obviously get more plays. What I think about that's interesting on in Everdale also, Dean, is why you're making the decisions of whether to you know play the card, go get do the worker placement or whatever, but how like the spring, the fall, winter, whatever, it starts in spring, right? Spring, summer, fall, how you go through the seasons and it's not like everyone has to wait you know, to move on to the next season. You just move along to your next season. Yeah. And the negative to it is you could end the game and some people could have people. People could have quite a bit more of the game left. Have you ever had that happen where like someone had like played for another five to 10 minutes? Yes. And, and that is, you know, I definitely know that that's an issue that some people have. I, I didn't, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me either. I think it's, I think it's fine. Cause typically like at that point you're kind of, you're moving pretty quickly. Yeah. Five or 10 minutes. Mm, probably I, I guess the tech, you know it could go longer and I've got another game like that on my top 10 that that is the same style of that we'll talk about that in a little bit so. last question and then we'll move on do you think this game would be as popular without the tree hmm. I thought like I know people complain about it but I actually think the tree and the presence the table presence of the game probably makes it a little more popular like I'm looking at that versus like Imperial Settlers where it's just flat I think so. I think it does. And, and, and I'm not art. a component guy, but I think the art and components actually would make this rise a little bit. Andrew Bosley, and then you've got the yeah, all those different resource components that are really, really well done. Yeah. Yeah, I think for sure it it brings it more attention to it. I think so. And now it doesn't make it a better game, no, but it but it draws more people to the it game. It almost makes you want to play it more. Yeah, absolutely. Like, wow, that's a pretty game. Yeah, and that's important. You know, table presence yep. in board games is has value, I think. That is ranked 28 overall, and that is Dean's number 9 overall. 
My number nine. Pandering to the people. Yeah, I know. My number nine overall is a absolute classic. That is 17 overall. Wow, we've been going and calling like some really high number games out here. That is Terra Mystica. Uh, Terra Mystica is so much fun. You sit down, Dean, at the table and you are looking at. <laughs> like you what, do most games. Yeah. But you, when you sit down, you're like, what faction do I get this time? Yeah. You know, and that's. I love that. And then, because they, they play wildly different and like. You know, what extra action or bonus action I'm going to get whenever I lay the sanctuary, I think that's what it's called, on the on the table. And what's my, you know, normal extra bonus that I have? Do I have giants and I don't even have the shovel thing that you go around? But you're going around and you're transforming uh, territories. And as you're doing that, you're putting your, you know, uh, trading houses and dwellings and different things out on the board. When you build next to other players, they can actually get power for the power bowls and stuff. So there's a ton of player interaction here. Um, with where you're building and different things like that. And if you, you know, transform one of the territories and you don't put something on it, Dean can just change it. And you're like, That's are you right. kidding me, Dean? And then he's like, well, you shouldn't have done that. Oh, yeah. And I have done that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and made some people, people very like, mad. Kidding me? Like, I just spent all this time, especially because you can sneak up on the river. You're like, My wife would be so mad if I did that to her. I did it to Jonathan one time, and he was he was not pleased. But <laughs> this is a really good game. Not in my top 50. And part of that, you know, we we've, we've talked about what games kind of slip because you, they're just, just not really on your recently. radar. Yeah. I haven't played this one. I played the digital version a decent amount lately. You and you I know, played. Did we play year. the digital version together or no? Mm, maybe. Maybe maybe, maybe not. we did during last year's quarantine or something like that. But but I really like this game. I just need to get the physical game. I don't have... You have the physical? Yeah, let's uh, play yeah. it. Okay. All right, let's do that. I also have not played Gaia Project and I do have that. But The cult track is great with interaction. And, yeah. and the last thing I'll say is the power bowls are so smart where you, the way you're moving these bowls around your power around in the bowls and it can give you extra actions and different things like that and trying to figure out how to get the most power to get the most extra actions and all that. It feels clever as yeah. you're, as you're, oh yeah, I can do that. And that gives me that. And then I could do that and just really cool way the area, um, the way that you're out on the map and stuff. I just love this game. I like it better than Gaia Project. I, the player powers are way more interesting in my opinion. And I like the cult track, the simplicity of it. So in your face, if you like Gaia Project more. Mm, I got to get this one on the table again. I, like I actually, I'm probably in the minority. I don't know. Maybe not. A lot of my friends like Gaia Project more. So just kidding about the in your face. Check out Gaia Project if you like this. <laughs> All right. My number, That's number nine for me. My number eight is going to be higher on John's list as well. It's Ginkopolis. But I'm going to say this. This one's ranked 367 overall, which is a That's a mistake, tragedy. people. That's it's, a mistake. Yeah. This is... That's not right. People are wrong on this one. I'll say it. All right. That's Dean's number eight. 367 is not low, but considering how excellent this game is, it really should be like a top 20 game, I think, wow. or top 50 game or something for everybody. Everybody must like this because John and I do. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. <laughs> we'll talk All about right. that in a minute. My number eight. Your number eight. My number eight is an Alexander Fister game, the last Alexander Fister game on my list. He had two previous ones, I believe, on this list. Yeah, Mombasa and Maracaibo. This is the Great Western Trail. I can't believe this didn't make my list. How dare I? I, Dude, I'm telling you. Look at that. Oh, someone has a 3D board of Great Western Trail. That's pretty cool. I forgot to talk about on the podcast the 3D version of Catan and how much that cost. I meant to bring that up. Have you seen it? I've seen it, and I kind of... It's ridiculous. I want to play on it. Yeah, so expensive. But I have a 3D copy of it. All right, go ahead. Okay, so in Great Western Trail, you were going to be deck building cattle. Who knew that deck building cattle would be so much fun? But it is. You want some Jersey cows? Get you some Jersey cows. I'm telling you, boy. Bro. B- b- <laughs> that was like my country and my uh, skateboarder coming out at the same time. It was like, I was going to say boy and bro, and it was like, bro. You used to say like, Great Western Trail. Great Western Trail. <laughs> But what's so intriguing about this game is number one, the card play is incredibly intriguing. You Look at those, those buildings. Pictures, You're like, is... man, I want to play this even more now. <laughs> oh man, number one on my list now after watching. Jeez, that. all Dean had to see was the way those <laughs> uh, 3D printed pieces are. Um, but what's also cool is not only you're building your deck, and that's obviously going to score you points as you get up to the top. You're starting here at the at the bottom of the board, and you're going through all these buildings, and as the game progresses, you're putting new buildings on the map, which are going to give you more actions. Your other opponents are doing the same thing. They can even have buildings that stop. 
yeah. collaborate and you and have listen. to t- and you have to that's right and you've got to pay him something you know or, or whatever and so when you finally get to the top then you you know deal your you let your cattle out and you score points for that and then you come back to the bottom and you start all over again and i'm telling you you just keep doing that and it's a dead gum blast so there you go you add the rails to the north i think it's what it's called expansion yeah. uh-huh. and it makes it even better this game is every time i play this it's one of those i go why don't i play this more so good my number eight great western trail i did not say what it was ranked overall i know it's really high like four or ten something. ten okay yeah <laughs> we're basically doing the bgg top 10 right now or 20 my number seven is that yeah, right that's is right the number 35 overall so that's not too high on there right yeah Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. This is absolutely nothing like any game that's going to make anything on John's list. This is straight up, you're just going around exploring a... There's cats playing that game. There is a an incredible picture of cats playing Ma- Mansions of Madness. Oh my gosh. They're gonna get that des- had to be Photoshopped. They're going to get destroyed. Right. Oh my gosh. Okay, so in, in this game, you're going around and exploring a mansion and figuring out what it is your what your task is. And... The game feels very creepy. Like I'm exploring, John's exploring these different areas, and you get scared a little. Yeah, like we set the mood. This is a, hey, you know what? We're coming up on Halloween and my birthday time. Ooh. This is when I start getting like this game to the part. table, and I love it. I, I just love, I love the immersion in this game. Now, one big thing that people might not like is it can take a long time. It says two to three hours on BGG. I have for sure played games that are longer than three hours of this. Wow. But I just, I really love the immersion. I think it's a lot of fun and it feels, it feels scary. Like if there's a game that feels scary to me, this is it. It just feels like you're actually doing these things in the game. Yeah. The only thing that's madness is how high this is on your list. You think it should be higher? No, it should not be this high. I'm just kidding. I've never played it, but people love this game. Yep. It just isn't in what I think I'm going to like, so I haven't played it, but I totally would because it's being ranked 35 overall and being number seven for you does intrigue me you might like this because you know if you know what you're getting into you're not looking at mechanics in this game you're looking at the experience and you know you're rolling dice for uh for you know completing these objectives or whatever there are some other expansions that you know actually in the base game too you have puzzles instead of just doing that so like there's more to it than just rolling dice yeah but I think if you go into it with that mindset, I'm just going to go experience this this horror film Lovecraftian environment, then then you might like it, John. Boom. Yeah. That's your number seven, Mansions of Madness. My number seven is my last Stefan Feld game on the list, and that is Trajan, which is my favorite Feld game of all time, apparently, if it's highest on my list, right? What do you think, Dean? What do you think about this game? I think I have coffee in my mouth right now. Oh, I'm sorry. That was a bad I think time. Trajan is really good, but it is not his best work. You'll hear about his best work on my next It's his pick. magnum opus. It is. So in Trajan, there's all kinds of spots to go to the board. You can go out and send your legionnaires out to do a military conquest. You can go and... Um, I'm trying to pull up a picture of the board here. I apologize for a second there. There we go. You can go to the Senate and do different things, but basically you're in ship goods. You're going to be getting goods, but you have all these different things that are going on and you have this really cool Mancala um, board, player board to get your actions and you're moving your pieces around and you can make your Mancala have these powerful actions by the Trajan tiles. They're called Trajan tiles, right, Dean? I th- I, yeah, I think so. Yes, okay. they are. It took and so, a, so, so, so if you end your bowl and it has like two different colors in there or whatever, then you're going to get that bonus as well. So it's a lot of like, I feel like this game's a lot of, um, you, you have a lot of plates that are kind of spinning and you're trying to get them all to like align together. And as you get them to align together, it feels so satisfying and you score hopefully a ton of points. Again, I love the way the Mancala works, and I love how you're just looking out on so many options and going, how can I score? You're going to score points in this game. It's point salad. Mm -hmm. But how can I score more than my opponents? This game is brilliant, and I love it. Yep, yep. This is, a. a, I will say, a great game. I I totally agree with that. Not in my top 50. I don't remember where I had this in my top 10 games, but it was on there because it's it's a really good one. It is ranked 99 overall, so this would be my lowest one the one that's the lowest on BGG for me so far. I'm wanting to say that may have just bumped up because I thought when I looked at that yesterday, it was ranked 100. Oh, there you go. I could be wrong. But what is Stefan Feld's highest 
ranked game is your number six. My number six is the Castles of Burgundy. And in this game, you are rolling dice and you are placing those dice. And Ron, Ron Burgundy is on the cover. Ron that was Burgundy. smart. <laughs> so you're rolling on, dice. On BGG, someone has a box cover of Castles of Burgundy and it has Ron Burgundy on there. And you are placing those dice and taking the different actions. So you might be getting tiles from the board. You might be placing tiles into your kingdom. You might be ta- uh, selling goods. There's lots of different things that you can do with those dice. But every round, it's just two dice. Rounds go by really quick. The game itself is actually pretty quick. 30 to, nine mi- 30 to 90 minutes play time. And that is, I think, right. I think you can play a 30 to 40 minute game if you know the game really well with, it to- with two players. I just really love this game, and I've played it a ton, and it's never gotten stale for me. I've, I've played it mostly two-player. This is one I do recommend playing at a like two, three players. Four, if you're playing with people who don't know what they're doing, can be it can be too long. But, yeah. but I still mm, love this game. So good. It's a good game. It's kind of weird how it's so high, and it didn't even make my top ten of Stefan Feld games. I need to play it again. Maybe I, I just understand. haven't played it in a while. I don't understand how that couldn't make your top ten. Although Fellians. actually, I can I can understand because his games are amazing. That's why. It's that's why that, that that is absolutely the truth. It's not, I like Castles of Burgundy. I still own the game. I I'm not going to get rid of it. It's just I really love his games, and there's yeah. so many good ones out there of his. So you're right. That is your number six, Castles of Burgundy. Again, ranked 15 overall. Yep, pretty and awesome. I, I really like also the new version of this. I know it's it's. Hit or miss for some people with the board. They think it might be too busy, but I actually like like it it with all the, you know, because it comes with lots of goodies inside the box. Speaking of goodies inside the box, my number six is Teotihuacan, City of Gods. How about that? Sorry. This game was a... I say this every year. Threw up in my mouth a little bit. I don't know why you don't like this. (laughs) Just kidding. I do like it. It's fine. Go ahead. (sighs) This is a game that I didn't love the first time I played, though I enjoyed it. But it has constantly gone... Every year, it just continues to go up my list. They continue to come up with more expansions, which makes the game... Um, it mixes it up. Let me say that. I, I like a lot Does of expansions. Does it make it better? Uh, yes, sometimes. You know, I don't know. Okay. You know, it's, it's definitely not... I can play the base game, and it would be a top 10 game for me. So it's not like I have to have that or anything. But in this game, it's really... I just love the way that the dice work in this game. You're going to be moving around a giant rondelle. So there's a lot of rondelles in my top 10, apparently. Or at least there's a few. Um, but whenever you go there, um, you're go- the value of the dice matters. And also, whether there are other dice there matters. And you're going to have to even pay... Coco or whatever it is, um, depending on you know the dice that are there. But you're gaining resources and you're building in the temple and you're going up different tracks. I mean, Dean, it seems like this would be a game you would like. You like rondelles. You like using dice. You like going up tracks. You like really great components. And yet you still say it's okay. No, it's it's more than okay, but it's yep for most people the thing that the big thing engine building in here with is the and i like this in games and in fact i'm going to talk about this in a game about things triggering things that trigger things that trigger things for some reason oh yeah you didn't like i just kept missing things in this game and and it it could be that all the plays we played this multiple times but they were all at like large groups there's a lot there was a lot that was before covid yeah at convention there's tons of things going on you're probably getting distracted a lot yeah and that's probably i need i probably should go back and play this in fact it's on board game arena too and dude why are we not playing it right now right now well because we're doing a podcast right now yeah that's why we got to play this again you've got to play this. i will do it i will play this one again I'm, it might even rise up there like Twant and Sue you, you know, because that's yeah. one that I didn't think I would love and I had ended up really loving I, it. Man, I think you're really going to like this. This is Daniele Tassini. It's ranked uh, 71 overall, really high. That's my number six, Teotihuacan, City of Gods. All right, my number five, five. is a game that's ranked 238 overall. This is Jamie Stegmeier, Tapestry. Boom, dude. Speaking of games you love that, this game. that triggers this thing, that triggers this thing, this this game does that as well. Uh, in this game, you're essentially just moving up on tracks. There's four different tracks that you can move up on. And as you move up on those, it's going to do different things. So if you're moving up on military track, oftentimes you're going to be conquering on the map. If you are moving up on the science track, it's often going to be benefiting you in other areas. The exploration is going to allow you to put tiles out. And then the technology track is going to allow you to build technologies. Now, this is a civilization game. Mm-hmm. But it it doesn't feel like super thematic to me. But it it doesn't matter. I don't I don't care because it I feels just a love, little thematic to me. A little bit, but not like 
you know, when you think civilization game, you want it to be uber thematic, and this is not it at all. But the gameplay is so good to me that I just, I don't care. And, the, and the, <laughs> a big thing that I really enjoy about this is the fact that you all get different factions and they all play out so very differently. And I enjoy that about it a lot too. Yeah. This is just an excellent game. There's player interaction in this game. There's, th- there is that piece that John was talking about with Everdale where I'm going to move into the next phase, even if you're still back in yeah. this phase. And so this one, I think even more than Everdale probably is I can play for a good 20 minutes or 30 minutes even beyond you. Now, I've not experienced the 30 minutes, but I've heard that Some that does happen. That. Yeah, That could be frustrating, but for me, I still really just love the gameplay of it. I do too. I do like along those lines, um, if you end the round first, you're going to get like resources to go. So like there's a bonus to actually ending it first as well. Um but I didn't. I the only thing this could this was close to my top fifty. I do really like this game, but the way the tapestry cards work is not my favorite. Um, I think it can be a little bit too lucky. Mm-hmm. But besides that, I really do enjoy this game. The components are sub, it can be are I, subpar, but the tapestry card towards the beginning of the game will be luckier than it will later on. Correct. Yeah, but but I it, it doesn't bother me enough. This is a great game. That was a joke about the components, by the way. Yeah, two hundred and thirty eight. Overall, that's your number five. My number five, I'm sweating right now because my top five could almost just change at any given point in time. And I'm asking myself, even right now, should I shift a few things around? Oh, my goodness. Uh, but I'm not going to. I'm going to stick with what I had originally here, and I'm going to go with Anachrony. Oh, that should five. have been your number one. Number, It might be one. Like I don't have all the expansions and stuff of this game. And I don't have the miniatures like you know Dean would love to have. I am just might as well pull up. Look at that, Dean. So the base game doesn't have miniatures in it? No, you can buy a miniature pack for mm, 40 bucks or something like that. Mm -mm. You wouldn't, you couldn't own it without having that. Could you? It has to have miniatures. If it's going to be in my top anything. That's true. Except for castles of Burgundy, which the components are hot, steamy pile of garbage. But for some reason it's still high for you. (laughs) Look at that board. So in anachrony, first of all, I'm not a guy where theme super matters, but theme can bump things up. This dystopian theme is brilliant. This is a David Turtsey game. And in this game, let me see if I can find a picture of uh, zoomed out. There we go. There is an asteroid or a meteor 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 that is going to hit the planet. And you know it's going to because guess what? There's time travel in this game. And so people are going back and telling you, be prepared. It's going to hit the capital and you're going to flee the capital. And as you flee the capital, depending on what faction you have, you're going to score points based on having certain things and certain people that you're fleeing and how many you have can score you a bunch of points. That's a big way you score points in the game, though there are other ways, but it's worker placement. But except except for you have your own buildings that you're that you're going to place on Dean, but you also are going to put your people in these exosuits, just like this glorious picture, and send them over, Dean, send them over to the capital and you can't do it unless you have the exosuits powered up you can send resources and people back in time but you have to pay them back to close the time loop or you're going to lose points at the end of the game there are paradoxes that can happen this i should have put this higher oh are you serious but i'm going to talk yourself up on i'm going to keep it number five but this game is so fun Anachrony. We should. I think we're going to have to just say we're going to forty-seven re- overall. We're going to review Anachrony. That's we're just yes. going to have to do it because I. That's the only way that I'm going to get it. You're Why do I have it? Play start at it's ten stars. I refuse. Ten out of ten. I refuse to play this game without the miniatures, though. So you're going to have to pick that. Oh up. Oh my gosh. Before. Okay. <laughs> it's weighted at four, so it's it's heavier, but it didn't. My wife, who generally likes to play three or a little higher than three, really likes this game. So I, the weight comes in like the decision space, not like. It's so complicated to figure out how to play. Is this like the Tomorrow War, the Chris Pratt time travel movie? Does it feel like that? Uh, it feels way better. How than many that. aliens are that in this movie? That movie is a six out of ten. <laughs> not bad, but not great. <laughs> oh man, you disagree with me on that? I do. Number five or number one? I mean, I don't care. You can give it whatever you want. <laughs> My number four is a game that does not have miniatures. How about that? You knocked it out of the park on this one. Baseball highlights twenty forty five. Boom. Excellent game. This is a deck builder. Look at those miniatures. Where you are. There we go. It does have miniatures. It, you can get. Oh, man. You would. Dude, you would love uh, it. No. You're I'm a little not. jelly right now. No, I'm not. 
I actually picked up the game comes with pawns, but I do have the the wooden meeples, like the baseball meeple players. And in this game, you're playing baseball. I mean, that's it. You're going head to head with somebody else. It's a two player only game, kind of. Okay, so it's two players. I'm playing head to head with John. The reason why it says one to four players or even more is because you can play tournament style and like John and I would play each other and then two other people are playing and then the winner plays and you know, you can do it like that. There's lots of different ways you can play out a season. The game is just fun and the deck building comes in. You're going to be playing cards that also they're going to be moving you around the base. They're going to be playing defense and all that, but also they're going to be giving you buy value and use those values to pay for new cards. And so you have to get new player acquisitions. That's right. Do I want to really try to win this game and and not have as or many get buy points money. or get a bunch of money and so early on you might even throw some games just so you can get some better players down the road throw some games yeah great pun i mean and that was literally what i was going for it was great thanks all right i love this game i i as a two-player only game it, it would not make it this high on my list for sure but i i just love the fact that you play that tournament and it really is just so fun everybody's having a great time i really enjoy this game i end up selling my copy because nobody wanted to play it with me except for dean and he has a copy yep so like i did really like this i need to play it again this was on my top 50 i think last year i just haven't played it in like a year i think i played it on the phone like maybe the app version a time or two but yeah, I was sad when I sold this one, but I was like, I'm never playing this without Dean, so it's whatever. Excellent. You need to play in a tournament sometime. I actually, I would love to. I wish you would have kept your copies so that when we try to you have, have a tournament, then we could have extra copies of this game because we're oh, going to well. need them. Anyway, that's your number what? Four? Four. Mm, good game. All right, baseball highlights, Dean's number four. That is ranked number 484 overall, so the lowest one so far. That's a Mike Fitzgerald game as well. Yep. My number four is Dean's number 10. That is Glenmore 2 Chronicles. Dean, this is a game that... Was this our first Kickstarter game we did as Meeple Town? If it wasn't, it was really close. I think that's right. Yeah, it was for sure. We didn't... And we didn't even like... We did a playthrough online of this one. It was before we had like a physical copy of it. Ooh, could you drink some whiskey while you play? Maybe so. How about that? It, it feels very thematic. I know. So in, in this game, and Dean and I will both uh, chat about this, but you have a rondelle that you're going to be going around, and it's a simple rondelle that you're just going to pick up tiles. I'm trying to find a picture here for the YouTube folks. But it, it's really grueling decisions because you're like, I see that tile that's five tiles ahead, but do I really want to jump that far ahead? But at the end of the game, whoever has the most tiles, that's negative for them. So then on the flip side, you could be like, well, if Dean's going to go ahead and pick up these three tiles, that's not good for him because he's going to keep building up a city. I think that that's a brilliant piece to it as well. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to set that up for you to, because this is both ours, so I don't want to steal all the thunder. Yeah, well, the big thing I was going to say, because you've heard us talk about this a lot in the past, unless you're new and then you've not heard us talk about it at all. But the the one thing I was going to say is I actually just got the expansion for the, what is it? Highland, Highland Games. Yeah, the Highland Games expansion. And I've not had a chance to explore the Chronicles. However, I have played the the solo version of this game with that. You know how I like games that have solo versions that are pretty easy to grasp? This is? It is a little more complicated than than some, but I still really enjoyed it. Like, you, you really, especially for your first game, the whole game I had the rule book out because you have to know, like, all these... They're not really f- super fiddly rules, but, like... Basically, you're flipping a card over and you need to know what that means every yeah. time, like whether they're going to take this action or this action or whatever, and then what happens on that action because you might forget some of those things. But I still really enjoy the autumn of this. And I think if you're into solo games, I think this one is it's really well done and worth checking out for sure. I'm just looking forward to trying the other Chronicles. Absolutely. The things I like about this very quickly is when you set a tile, because you may be like a tile laying game with a rondelle. What else, What is so great about it? When you set a tile in, it sets off every other tile that's surrounding it. So strategically where you want to place them, not only for setting off other tiles, but for how many times the tile you just placed could get set off later, right? Because yeah. you may be like, well, it won't set off many, but I, I'll have more opportunities to fill it out and set it off later. Plus, there's overbuild tiles that you can get. There aren't a ton of them. So strategically, when to take those, you can actually overbuild on one of yours and set everything off again, which is cool. But lastly, uh, or two last things, I love the way the scoring works. It's yes. relative to the other players. Uh-huh. So you know, I score points on whiskey based on how much Dean has. So heavy player interaction with that. And then finally, how many chronicles there are. 
like man you can play for days and it just feels different because you're doing the dragon boat race or the uh penny mobs or whatever my phone just went off uh there's a little little birdie in the house (laughs) and so it's just it's just so fun every time i play it i love this game number four overall Yep, totally agree. With those Chronicles, it really just adds to that replayability of the game. Love it. It's 203 overall, so it's climbing slowly. But, man, I think that should be a top 100 game, obviously. It's so good. Yep. One more two Chronicles, four for me, ten for Dean. I think more people are getting it now that the, the Kickstarter is being fulfilled. I think there's more and more people getting the base game. So, My number three is a game that is another uber popular game, and that is Scythe. You heard Ooh. of this one before? What? what this game one. This one has miniatures, John. This is another a, Jer- Jamie Stegmeier. Another Jamie game. Stegmeier. Two in my top five. Wow. Yep. You love him. I love his games. I don't really know him on a personal level, but in this game, you are th- maybe you should get to know him on a personal <laughs> level. It's a pretty simple game. It's it's kind of a war game in a sense, and I'll explain that in just a second. But basically, I have my own player board, and I'm going to move my pawn over and take action or actions on that one spot, and that's it. And there's only four different spots on your board, unless you add another from the factory, and then that changes things a little bit. But the turns are really quick. And what you're trying to do is move around the board. You're going to gather resources. You're going to be building up mechs. That's right. It's got mechs. You're going to be traveling around, exploring. This is a, a considered a 4X game. Uh, it doesn't feel you know like some other 4X games, but it, but it is. And I just I love it. It feels thematic, and it feels... Uh, Euro-y at the same time, which is, you know, something that I tend to enjoy. But the other thing that I like is that I said it's a war game, but you're not actually like always going to battle. In fact, if you just go out and and try to take somebody out, you leave yourself vulnerable for somebody to attack you. So there's a lot of this Cold War stuff going on where you are threatening, but might not necessarily attack somebody. Although you get points, uh, you get a star for being able to win a battle, and you that's how you're going to win the game. That's how yeah. you're going to end the game. So. I was going to say the threat of war in my plays almost is bigger than the actual wars that mm-hmm. take place. But when they do, it's really exciting because there's not just happening over at one after the other. Yeah, and if you're playing with more than two players, you know, when John and I are battling, this other person over here is like, oh, yeah, because they know... It's going to weaken us, and then yeah. they might be able to come in and steal our stuff. So, and I like how you're just trying to race to get those stars. You know, like I got to get this to f- fulfill that. You know, I've got to yep. get that, and that, that's really fun as well. This was close to my top fifty. I still really enjoy it. Um, just not quite there. It's excellent. I need to play it again. It's been a while since I played it at more than two players, which I don't really like it at two. Oh players. yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely need more. I think. Yep. But that's Scythe. That's Dean's number three of all time. Dean, yep. I think a lot of people would agree with you, especially since it's ranked 14 overall. That's a lot of people's favorite game for sure. That's it. My number three of all time I played last night, and that is an Uwe Rosenberg game, and that is La Havre, which is ranked 52 overall. Um, I adore this game. I just love – so in this game, you're going to be getting – there's going to be different offers that are going to have. I've got it here on YouTube where you're going to have the fish offer and the wood offer and the clay offer. And as you move your ship every single turn, you're going to add to you know something. It may say you add a fish and you add a wood. And then you're going to have the decision, Dean, do you want to go to a building and do an action on a building? But guess what? You can not only do buildings that you own, you can do buildings that other players have or in like the town area. But guess what? If I want to use your building, Dean, I owe you something probably. Not on all the cards, but on a lot of them. I might yeah. have to give you food or something like that. So that's really, really interesting. Um, or I can take one of the offers. Man, there's like five wood there. Oh, but I I really want this uh, this spot to go to this building because Larissa, my, my wife, just took her disc off of it because you can only go there if there's no disc. But oh, if I and if I don't take this offer, then... If I take the offer, then I know someone's going to take the wharf, and I need to build a ship right now. And those are really fun. But this game is like really, I like games, I've said this over and over, that are really tight, and the feed the worker aspect is is challenging. It's not like you can just sort of ignore it, and it's, you know, whatever. This game, you have to pay attention to this, because every single end of the round, you're going to keep having to pay more and more food. Now, so much so to more my wife is like, Ugh, I don't like this. Like, if you don't like that about it, you're not going to like this. But if you like games where you're doing that, it's so brilliant and so fun. And you do feel so satisfied when you're like, man, I've, 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 I've kind of figured this part out. I've, I've gotten my workers. They're, they're getting fed or whatever. And I'm now I'm really scoring points. And it's always that tension between, should I worry about feeding my people or go ahead and buy that building because it's going to be worth 14 coins at the end of the game, which is a lot, you know, or whatever. 
Yeah, this one, the the tension of feeding your workers doesn't feel as punishing as Agricola, I would say. Wow. Is that right? Or am I wrong about that? I've only played this in the app version, and I've never felt that same tension, but maybe I, I just don't have enough experience Here's the thing. With it. You can really hyper-focus on it and be fine. You know, and maybe that's why I'm I most of the time, like okay. there's an interesting dynamic where there's cards and you'll see them here if you're on YouTube's where like you can build or purchase these buildings that are part of three rows. Sometimes the wharf, which is what allows you to build ships, you can always buy ships, but they're kind of expensive. It can get buried. And if it's buried down deep and you have to go through a lot of things, you could get really far behind. And I've had games like that because you're not putting out ships because ships give you a perpetual thing. Like depending on the player count, you build a wood ship. I was playing last night for two players. You get four food for the rest of the game. Right. As long as you have that ship and it helps every single round. It's probably that when I play this game, I, I tend to focus on those things that give me a ton of food. But yep, I, I need to I'd like to play the physical copy. It's of this. so I say good. This a lot, but I, I don't imagine it would be like super high on my list just because I've enjoyed the digital copy. But I love the art on this, too. Anyway. I thought that was your was that your number one last year? My number two last year. Two. Okay. I, I almost put it number two this year. It's whatever. Yep. The, I'm, I'm being honest. Like this top five, I could any of them could be my number one. So just you're just listening to five of my favorite games. Okay. That's my number three, right? And that is Lahav fifty two overall in BGG. My number two is another game about woodland creatures. That is Root, the game of woodland might and right or something like that. I think that's that's what it says on the. How the do game you of- not know? The game of woodland. I knew that. Well, because it's just called Root. Well, I did know. I got it right, didn't I? Well, yeah, but you second guessed yourself. I did. And in this game, you are, it's asymmetric. So you're going to take on the role of one of the different factions, and you are going to try to get 30 points faster than other people. And you're going to do that by battling it out in these different clearings, prototypes clearings in the woods. So the, the base game, you've got the Marquis de Cat, you've got the... Uh, the Irie, you've got the um, Alliance, and then you have the Vagabond. And all of them play so differently, which is why I love yeah, this cool. game so much. And then you add in the expansion stuff, and there's even more goodness there with the with those, whatever those lizard people go. are, those otters. There's lots of good stuff in there. I just, I really love how different these play out. I will say the one negative about it is that to teach this game can be a bear, if, if, if no one's ever, if no played, one's it ever played it, because you really do need to know what the other factions do besides just your own. I mentioned this when we talked about Merchant's Cove. The reason why I like Merchant's Cove is because I can just teach my faction and learn my faction. I don't have to know everybody everybody else's stuff, but I could, but I still need to pay attention to what they're doing. Root, you really do. You, yeah, you need to know what's going on, especially with the vagabond and stuff going on. Yeah, they could, yeah, yeah. Like, wait, what are they doing? And why is the alliance like put, placing all these tokens out on the board? Like, you don't want to get hosed by any of that. So. If I play with people that know the game, I'm not great at this game, but if they know it or or if, you know, we can grasp it pretty quickly, this is an excellent game. I just love it so much. I think it was my number 17. I really, really enjoy this. I actually got the app uh, within the last month and it's really brilliant. It's not a cheap app, but they did it. They done it real well. Yeah. This is also one you, I don't think you have to have the expansion, but I think if you play it and love it, you're probably going to want to just try out more factions. So there you go. Root. Great game. My number two. Root. Um, Are you okay? <laughs> Did you a s- game of woodland might and right. I, <laughs> I am broken. Foot in mouth. Because <laughs> I made fun of him for not knowing what it was, and then I blanked <laughs> on it for a second. It's a really good game. Number 27 overall on BGG. My number two is Dean's number eight overall, if I've got that right. Ginkopolis. Dean was getting yep. on his soapbox earlier. And was just complaining that this is only 367 overall. Dean, would you like to go ahead and take it from there? <laughs> like explain it? So No, would you like to complain a little more? No, no, no. I don't need to complain. I more. like I love the drama. I know you do. You do love the drama. I, 367 out of that many games is not awful. It's just it's surprising because maybe this is a game that can be divisive. I don't think so though. I this is a lot of people's like really favorite game this is you know yours or one of them yeah it's one of mine too it's it's just so much fun because there's a lot going on there's there's this deck building that's going on this card draft or not deck building sorry tableau building there's mm-hmm. card drafting there is it's engine building because every time you do an action after you get it in your tableau wow i get all these things for yep. placing a tile area majority there's yeah what else lots yep lots lots of stuff going on there's uh 
point gathering from those tableau besides just the engine building as well it's just a really well done game with all these mechanisms coming together such good mechanisms so beautifully and you have the it's the card play so interesting you know like you're drafting cards and you're like man i can use this card for so many different things I can expand the city. I can build up on on the city. I can use it for to get some resources or whatever. And so, like you have like these several three decisions. I think of what am I going to do with this card? While there's all this area majority and stuff going along out there, but also if I you know build up, then I'm going to be able to keep this card and keep it for engine building. So maybe I just want it for the engine building, though I'm not super excited about how I'm, the one I'm building up over there. And you have to manage your resources really well. Yeah, And you have to get the resources because you can't just build up willy nilly if you don't have the resources to be able to do it. So it's what I the reason I went ahead and put it number two is how fast it can play even at two. And I like this game better at three, um, but at two, it's still really fun. And I just I just love how I can like lickety split like an hour long game, you know, maybe 45 minutes. Yep. And it feels so satisfying. And you're just like, yes, it really does. And that's Xavier Horhees, which he did Twa. So if you like Twa and you've never tried um, Carson City, too, is that right? I think that's, yeah, I'm about to pull it up here. Yep. Um, if you like Twa, uh, Turn A, Carson City, uh, Carnegie, which I super want to play, Black Angel. He's done some really, really good games. Um, interesting that Twa is ranked so high. I like Gingopolis better, but I do love Twa. It was on my list. If you haven't watched it, it was on my top 10. So that is your number, my number two. It was Stop not on shaking your top. At me. It was not on your top ten. We're doing. I, it was on my top too. list. No, you said it was on my say, top ten. No, it was like twenty something. Okay, sorry. I w- I'm guessing. Okay, we need to wrap this up. But I'm guessing that out of the out of all the games we've talked about over the years, if I had to pick two games that we probably sold more copies of just <laughs> because of our hype for them, I'm guessing Glenmore Two and Ginkopolis. Maybe. They'd be up there, I think. We've hyped those games up a ton. They're so good. And now they're both on our top 10 list, but, which is you know even a bigger deal. The funny thing is, is I don't know if everyone believes in as much hype as we have for them, truthfully. like I've had people say multiple times, John, I like Glenmore too, but not as much as you do. The same so, person insane, told insane, and No, and same with Gingopolis. Those people are wrong. I've had multiple people say, that's a good game, but it's not like you know best of all time, John. So I've had that on both of those. Yeah, I disagree with them. Dean, what is your number one game of all time? Everybody like, this knows. This is super important. Everybody it's knows. It's not changed in three years. It is not. And it's going to be hard for this one to get knocked off. Blood Rage. Blood Rage. Blood Rage. This game came out in 2015. It's from my one of my, if not my favorite designer, Eric Lang, and Come On Games. And in this game, you are going Onk to is be better. drafting cards. <laughs> I'm kidding. You're going to be drafting cards, and those cards are going to do lots of different things. They're going to allow you to quest, which is completing different objectives to get points. They're going to be battle cards so that you can play them as a as a battle number whenever you have those battles. Dean gets distracted you by can, the beautiful minis. No, I was actually... I was, uh, I was belching under my breath is what I was Ooh. doing. So you can get cards that will allow you to upgrade your different things, your your leader or your warriors or getting monsters. It's There's lots of things that you can do. And then you're going to be using those cards to pillage different areas on the map. So there's like two phases, the drafting phase and then this other phase of taking your actions. You're going to do three acts of that. And I just love everything about this game. I love the drafting. It's even super though, tense. You know, you're using the same cards. It's those decisions are very grueling, even if you played this game a ton, because you might want to upgrade your monster or upgrade your leader, but you also might really want to make sure that you have battle cards and quest cards. And it's just, just an excellent game. I love it so, so much. And it's gonna be hard for this game to get knocked off, honestly. I just there's nothing that I don't love about it. You want to play game. it all the time any day. I like it a lot. It was on my list. Um, yeah. I, if you want to go hear my thoughts on it, you can hear them by going back and watching some of the other ones. This is another one that somebody, I, I really enjoy it. Somebody had asked, you know, which ones do you need, need expansions for? I don't think you need the expansions for this. I think that if you're, I really enjoy playing with the, uh, what is it called? The, the I'm gonna have to gods of Asgard, the mystics, the mystics, the, yeah, the mystics of Midgard is my favorite expansion um i don't i don't hardly ever play with the gods of asgard one but the mystics i really enjoy that one better but you don't need any of it you can play with the base game i agree you don't need it i don't even play with them that much yeah it's not every time but oftentimes i'm playing this as i'm introducing someone kind of new to it so i don't want to add a bunch of stuff but yep 
Number one of all time, Blood Rage. What's my number one of all time, Dean? That is 33 ranked overall. It is what my number one was last year. I played it again this year. It's the big box Rosenberg game, A Feast for Odin. Oh, that's right. A Feast for Odin. Dennis Lohausen Art. You didn't like this as much as I do. Like You haven't played it a ton, though, right? I've played it once. Yeah, okay, that's your problem. And I did enjoy it. It so in this game you did, have in case that in case that wasn't clear I did enjoy the game I thought it was fun yeah you but you didn't enjoy it enough to put it on your top fifty because you haven't played it enough probably yeah but you would come on I w- I don't know if I would this board has a ton of actions on it and you're going to be sending your workers from Thing Square to an action board where you can put one worker there's a columns where one worker two worker three worker four worker and obviously like the four worker actions are really really powerful but oh my gosh that cost me four workers but really the crux of this game is getting goods um, upgrading goods which is really cool in this game to put them onto your player board and cover up as many spaces as you pretty much can you can get income by surrounding stones or different types of goods and you'll get those every single round you have cattle that can reproduce and sheep that can reproduce but there's just what I love about this game game is it's just so many options for what to do what path to go down especially when you start the game off with occupation and you can get occupation cards and that can kind of change your strategy um my wife loves this game we played it again this weekend and i just was like babe this is like your favorite game of all time isn't it she's like yeah it's one of them for sure and i agree it is my favorite game of all time right now though i wrestled man gink is just i mean honestly gink is just as good so is lahav and glenmore and anachrony those five are all like my number ones of all time i'm just gonna be real i know people are gonna hate me saying that but i did my best of picking but i just love all five of those games so good Yep, I need to play this one. Really, this a lot of people really love overall. this game. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like a lot of the games we talked about today. They they are ranked pretty high. I know A Feast for Odin is one of those that people have it as their number one game, and that's it's quite a few people that have that. I think that's great. Okay, that is that's it. That's it. We did it, Dean. For, oh, I'm kind of disappointed. I'm exhausted. It's over. I'm exhausted. That's a lot of that's a lot of talking about games <sighs> and a lot of playing. I'm games. ready to move on to some reviews and start working on some new stuff. How about that? Okay, sounds good. So anyway, that does it for our top ten games of all time, and we'll go back to on a podcast. We're going to be going back to our our every other week podcast and kind of get back to a little bit normal of a schedule. John, tell people how they can get in touch with us. All right, if you're enjoying our YouTube channel, we'd love for you to subscribe if you're on pod. If you're on our listening on our podcast, uh, leave us a review, leave us a rating. If you go to at Meeple Town Games on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, you can check out a lot of stuff that we post over there. And if you like to support what we're doing, you can go to the uh, patreon.com slash Meepletown and we're Board Game Geek Guild 3407. Thanks for coming down to Meeple Town. Thanks for joining us and thanks to our Patreon supporters for making content like this possible. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com slash MeepleTown. To follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, find us at MeepleTown Games. Finally, to connect with us and other residents of MeepleTown, you can join Guild 3407 at BoardGameGeek.com. Until next time, thanks for coming down to MeepleTown. <laughs>